we're going to plan this really well when you come out for this conference and make sure there's there's downtime where we can nerd out but just sitting around on couches and things <laughs> um my question yes. is touch briefly on communication between the phosphate and the um root zones the idea of signal molecules or auto inducers has been a top, hot topic at my place i found a reasonable amount of information on it but they often from a very laboratory perspective do you know of any anywhere i can chase this further okay now let me ask you this lee are you looking at from the rhizosphere what it leaks or is it the byproducts oh. of the microbes with in the in a compost extract or a tea give me some more context and this is what the master class is we've got some amazing thinkers here Okay, so when we apply a liquid vermicast, whilst it contains mm -hmm. liquid microbiology, as you point out with minerals, we're applying, you know, we're taking our bucket of water of microbes to the sea. So overall, our, you know, for what's already existing, we're having an effect well beyond what's living within the liquid. So this idea of signal molecules yep. and, and within the reading that yep. I found that's been very good, all actions in a plant or in a, a, a biosphere relies on these short chain chemical signals to enact something to happen. So trying to find out further information for real world scenarios. So I found a cracker the other day about indole acetic acid and how worms produce it as does plant stimulating rhizobacteria uh, amongst other things. So. This idea of common signals and then specific signals strikes me, but this sort of, I feel it's very incomplete. I'm really looking for deeper sources. Yeah, well, looking at my library real quick. Here's here's a couple of books that I find, and then there's another one, look at this. Uh, you can see I have a library of, of yeah. stuff. It's like one of them's called, I don't know if you read this book called The Humosphere, and there's this one here called the rhizosphere an ecological perspective which is really good and this is one of my favorites it's called soil ecology by by patrick lavelle that's like a 300 dollars book but here's another thing i want you to think about uh lee um when you go to google scholar yeah there's a book that i just love this book it's called higher plants and soil organisms and it's written in the 1930s and it's free on pdf so I read that two or three times because I learned so much about the power of biology and what the things were Russians were doing way, way back there. And I think if you, uh, that would be very helpful to you. This is really exciting, Ray and, and Lee. Um, we've been playing around in this space for years and still haven't been able to crack it. We couldn't find any correlation. It didn't matter what, what level of biology or what biology we use, we couldn't find the correlation until we actually tested the level of minerals in the end product. And then yeah. correlated that with the yield in the paddock. And that really yeah. opened yeah. our eyes to the fact that the biology we suspect in the quorum sensing switches yep. to survive what yep. yeah what do you think of that right man all i can think about is i need to have more beer and smoke some cover crops to get down deeper with you two guys we're <laughs> just we're just we're just scratching the surface let's be honest like people like lee they're going down down the rabbit hole and he already sucked the red pill and he's already going down Look, we can get so deep into this. This is what I finally came to. I love this. I, I'm geeky. I read the textbooks and I get on there because I have to, because I consult. But at the end of the day, if I just can't carry out the basic logistics to be timely about moving the cattle, if I can't be timely about mm -hmm. uh, getting them off the paddock if I left them too long, if I can't be timely to get that cover crop in there, if you cannot be timely and carry out the logistics, you can be putting all these microbes out there and not carrying out the logistics. Well, you're still missing the whole point. Hmm. And it works in a system and it's elegant and it's complex. To be honest with you guys, the, the group here, there's many producers out in the world that are not at your level. So think about that.
you guys are really down the deep rabbit hole. And so you ought to really feel proud of you guys going down this path because I can't even talk basic level with people on about, and we're talking about people that went to college for agronomy. And, they know and, how to give prescriptions of campus, chemistry, you know? And this is what the masterclass is, um, you know, in my mind, that's that's what we're going to, that's why we have a conference and the masterclass so that, you know, that people can zoom in and zoom out. Like I love the way you came back to just, you know, if you mess up your grazing management, it doesn't matter how much depth you go, you can screw it all up. So we're going to plan this really well when you come out for this conference and make sure there's there's downtime where we can nerd out, but just sitting around on couches and things <laughs> and not be sort of, you know, putting you under too much pressure. But um, I want to also acknowledge everyone that attended today. It was, um, you know, the cream of the crop. We've got some amazing thinkers here and super proud of yep. all, all of those that have, um, you know, most people have yep. been involved at some point with soil restoration farming in the community as thought leaders. Just thank you. And um, I'm, yeah, super excited as many of us are to, to be able to get into planning the topics and schedule. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I'm looking forward to have IPAs with you and, and just <laughs> fellowship too. Yeah. So let's let's do that.